I mean, the, the way I try to pitch it to, to undergraduates is that this is one of the rare times in your life where somebody will ask you, like, when you're writing a paper, like, what do you think about this? Like, tell me what you think. Because normally, not, like, no one listens to anyone, right? Um, you know, unless you're a powerful person and people have to listen to you or you're, you know, a writer who makes it and people read you. And I think, like you said, like, there's a lot of modeling where it's like, it's a chance to just take significant questions or issues and, like, think about them, write about them, talk about them um, in a way that a lot of times like we don't get in the rest of our lives. And, and, I, and I think like, you know, I, I fantasize about things like what if we had, you know, meeting houses for like workers like we used to, like the Knights of Labor, where like education would happen outside of the class and people would like talk about books after work or whatever. Um, you know, I feel like it can't just happen here, like on campus. Mm, yeah. Like ed education and learning are so much bigger than that. But there's this perception, and I know we talked about it last time, that like the the ultimate in like critical thinking or education or learning is like happens on a university campus. Um, but it's a Don't. chance to just just think together, I think. And I think that's really important for all the mm -hmm. ways I can be cynical about stuff. Like I still mm -hmm. think that's kind of magical. Yeah, what's that? It's like it reminds me of like a, wasn't there a book called like Bowling Alone or something like that? that yeah, <laughs> Robert Putnam, right? Yeah, I mean, that, I, I wrote about coffee houses in my dissertation and my and what yeah. became the book almost be, because I was like sort of thinking about those social spaces mm -hmm. and what they are because like a, a you know that idea of like a '60s coffee house radical coffee house where people are talking about politics and there's kind of a social sociality to it. I mean, if, when you compare that to like you know the ubiquitous Starbucks sort of atmosphere, what it's like in there. There is not really it's it's so weird because like Starbucks comes on Remember when they were trying to do like, let's have a conversation about racism in Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And everyone sort of was like, well, how would we do that? That's really awkward. Right. And like it just it was so, it felt so unnatural. But then part of me was like, well, it was natural at one point to talk about racism in coffee houses. But this kind of corporate bank version of it that Starbucks is doing is just a demonstration of how shitty our our social culture is really and how far we are from that and not to idealize any particular time but that seems like a loss is sort of like that idea of because I, I i mean i'll i'll be the luddite again and be like it's because we're all on our phones and computers we used to have to just sit and stare at each other and eventually talk to each other but the but the technology has really encouraged us to fucking retreat and if we're gonna have a social space we're gonna go on twitter and say it there rather than talking to the person i sound like an old man i know but this is old man. This is old. No, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Luddite Marxist myself, you know, yeah. and I, you know, I, I, I think, you know, being against technology is like being against gravity. And like, that's not what a Luddite is, right? It's about like, how do we use technology in a way that like empowers people and not profit? Yeah. And yada, right. yada, the capitalist right? culture of technology is what we hate, not the technology yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you know, maybe we are old men complaining about this, but I think it is true that like, it's easy if you're in an uncomfortable or weird or quiet situation to just, you know, get your phone out and stare at that. I, I do it on the bus or wherever. Um, I do it at, you know, a bar. Um, but it, it, one thing that I'm, I'm encouraged by is that most of my students are, I guess, Gen Z and they seem to be much more skeptical of social media than maybe like we were when it first came out. Um, you know, they, they kind of don't like, the internet complex, as Jonathan Crary calls it, um, even though they, they're bound up in it and they use it all the time, just like, you know, you and I do. They're not on Twitter, though, you know, it's yeah. like it's funny because I come in and be like, hey, you guys see what's trending today? And they're like trending on what, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, like what platform are we on? You're right. I mean, I can't.